Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to spend some time um, talking about inverse uh, functions for trigonometric functions, which we have already learned about. Um, we did study sine, cosine, etc., different trigonometric functions. Well, um, they establish um, the value for an angle, usually measured in radians. So these are functions. Now, questions about the question is about the reverse uh, transformation. If you know, let's say, the value of a sine or a tangent, can we determine the angle which has this particular sine or, or tangent or something? Well, that's basically the purpose of uh, having converse functions. Because sometimes we do know, even for some practical results, sometimes you do know um, the trigonometric function of an angle and you just have to determine what the angle is. Um, well, um, unfortunately it's not simple with trigonometric functions. And um, the most important problem is that they are periodic, which means the value of a function at some particular angle is exactly the same as the value of this function with another angle. The simplest way is just to add 2 pi to, to an angle, and uh, all the trigonometric functions repeat their values after 2 pi. So we will address this particular issue. Now, um, what are these inverse trigonometric functions? Um, they all have a very um, a specific name. If you're talking about trigonometric function like sine, then there is an inverse function called arc sine. Cosine, arc cosine. Tangent, arc, to arc tangent, etc. Et so we are always um, uh, use the word of the name of the function itself and the prefix arc in front of it to designate um, the inverse function. Why? Well, the reason is actually quite simple, because um, most of the trigonometric functions and properties are explained or defined um, using the unit circle. And on the unit circle, especially if you are measuring angle in, in radians, the measure of the length, uh, me measure of the angle in radians is exactly the same as the length of this arc on the unit circle. Because this is one, and this is one, and this is one radian. So the radius is one, the arc is one, and, and the angle is measured as, as one. So in this particular case, angle is basically equivalent to an arc, and that's why we are adding a prefix arc to designate that we want to find an angle or the corresponding arc of a unit circle which has this value of a sine or a cosine, etc. So, so that, that's the etymology of, of the names. Now, um, as I was saying, <clears throat> the problem with trigonometric functions um, in defining their inverse is periodicity. Now, it, it's not such a simple problem, and we are supposed to address it quite well, actually, in this lecture. What's important is to, um, to realize what exactly is a function, an inverse function, and related uh, concepts of domain and codomain and range. So, um, even considering that I have addressed all these um, issues in the corresponding more general um, lectures about functions, I will, um, I, I will just repeat certain things here about functions in general and their inversibility. Um, just as an introduction to inverse trigonometric functions. Okay, so what is a function? 
Well, let's recall that you have to have one set of elements called domain. You have another set of elements, which is called codomain. And you have certain rules which put into the correspondence every element of a domain to some element in the codomain. What's important is that if you know an element of the domain, using the rule you can always find the corresponding element in the codomain. Now, are these images of these elements um, filling up completely the codomain? The answer is no. Codomain is a theoretically possible values for these images, but actual images can, can be concentrated in a narrower uh, subset of a codomain called range. Just as an example, if you have a function, um, let's say y equals to x squared, which is usually defined as the function from any real number to any real number. So this is all real numbers and this is all real numbers. But the range is actually only non-negative real numbers. It's a subset. So. These are important concepts, domain, codomain, and range. What also is important, look at this picture. I put the image of this point and this point into one point, uh, one element in, in, the, in the codomain or in the range. Is it possible for the function? The answer is yes. And example is exactly the same. Y is equal to x squared. If you have 2 square, you will get 4. If, if you have minus 2 square, you get 4, right? So this is 2, this is minus 2, and this is 4. So images are the same, although the prototypes are different. That's fine. There is no problem with that. This is still valid functions. Now let's talk about inverse function. Inverse function is the function which will allow us to find a prototype if you know the image. In this particular case, when 2 and minus 2 are mapped or are um, transformed into the same uh, element 4, it's impossible to find um, the prototype. It can be either 2 or minus 2, so we cannot really find it. It means that in this particular case, there is no inverse function. And function y is equal x squared, as we defined it, as the function defined for all uh, real numbers, this function does not have in, an inverse function. Graphically, it can also be viewed in such a way if you have a graph of y is equal to x squared, now, what does it mean that you have to find a prototype? It means if you take any particular y and you would like to find what is the prototype, well, you put the horizontal line through this point until it intersects the graph and then you drop the perpendicular. So, obviously, by definition of the graph, this point is uh, the point uh, which has coordinates x and y uh, satisfy, which satisfy this particular equation. So, x, which is this, square, which is this, would be equal to this. But now, you see we have a different intersection point. So we have two intersection points. So this so this is x1 and this is x2. Both x1 and x2 result in the same y. So if, if there is a horizontal line 
which intersects our graph in two points, this is a sign of uh, the fact that the function does not have an inverse. So that's the graph. We have more than one point of the argument, more than one argument, which maps into the same uh, image. Is there a way to overcome this difficulty? Well, obviously there is always a way, we just have to find it. And, and, and here is what usually is suggested in this case. Um, you should remember from um, general discussion about the functions that monotonic functions are always uh, establish a one-to-one -one correspondence between the domain and the range. Why? Well, that's basically by definition. If x1 is greater than x2, we have a monotonically increasing function y1 is equal to f of x1 greater than y2, which is f of x2. If you have this function monotonic, and you have one argument is greater than another, then the result of the function is exactly the same. And I'm talking about strictly monotonic function, not equal, no, no greater or equal sign in, in either case. Now, the same thing actually would be in, in case of monotonically decreasing function. The only thing is, this particular would be uh, uh, less than sign. But in any case, if these are different, these are different as well. So different points here would map into different points there. And that's actually enough to establish the one-to-one -one correspondence. And if we can establish one-to-one -one correspondence, that means we can inverse the function. The only thing we have to define the function properly and say that, first of all, we will consider the function not on the entire uh, domain, not defined, not defined for everything which original domain was we can actually reduce the main and define our function only here, but the purpose is to choose this subdomain, if you wish, in such a way that the function would be monotonic. Uh, well, one-to-one -one correspondence would establish with the range, and it will still cover the whole range. Um, so we are changing the definition of our function. Instead of function y is equal to x squared, which we define for all real numbers, let's define a new function, which looks exactly the same. It has the same transformation uh, rule from x to x squared, but only for x greater or equal to 0. So only for non-negative numbers. This is not the same function y is equal to x squared as we used to have it before. And it has a different graph. Instead of graph having the whole parabola, it has only one part of the parabola, because it's not defined here. So it's basically a completely different function. We changed the function. But, well, completely different, but not that different. So we are still retaining um, the uh, rule of transformation. And what's also important, as before, the, the, the range of the original function was all the uh, non-negative numbers. And the range of this function is also non-negative numbers. So we're still covering the whole range. And now what we're saying is, let's define a brand new function which has the same transformation rule, reduce the domain to the uh, subdomain where the function establishes one-to-one -one correspondence with the range and having actually the range as a codomain, so we don't have the difference between range and codomain. So this new function, and in this case, for instance, it's a function defined on all non-negative arguments, taking values or, uh, 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 in, in the all non-negative uh, real numbers. 
This is a reduced definition, but it's not that dramatically reduced because still the, the, the transformation is the same and the whole range is covered. If we do this, then this function is reversible. And the inverse function is actually this one. Now, this x belongs to a range, and this y, the range of the original function, and this y belongs to a domain of the original function. So this is non-negative, and this is non-negative, and everything is still fine. And this function is called uh, the principal square root, when only the positive, uh, non-negative rather, uh, value of the square root actually is taken into, cons into consideration. So the square root of 4, and I'm talking about the principal square root, is 2. Not minus 2. There is no such thing as minus 2 in this definition of the function and its inverse, because minus 2 doesn't really belong to a, a domain of the original or range of the inverse function. So, we are changing the definition of the original function. We are reducing it to a different subdomain and different codomain, which is actually equal to the range. That's number one. Number two, inverse function is supposed to be defined. Its domain is supposed to be the range. And its range is supposed to be the original domain of our function. So that's how they are inverse to each other. Now, if we start from here and apply original function, we get there. And then we apply the inverse function, we go back here into the same point. And that's why we are, um, we are saying that if you combine these two functions one after another, the original function first and then the inverse function, we will get identity. In this case, identity in this particular area, in the domain of the original function. Well, you can start from here and first uh, use inverse function, which goes this way, and then direct function will go this way, and we still get an, uh, an identity. We will still return into the same uh, element. So, that's what's very important. Very important to change the definition of our function in such a way that on a reduced domain and reduced Codomain down to the uh, range, we will have a one to one correspondence. And to establish one to one correspondence, it's easiest to use such a reduction where our function becomes monotonic. Because monotonic function always um, assures the one to one correspondence. This is the rule which is applicable to trigonometric functions as well. And here is how. Uh, I'll, I'll just do a very simple example, which will show that that's how we can do it. If you take, for instance, the function sine, which is like this. So obviously, if you take this value of y, and draw a horizontal line, you will have more than one actual infinite number of intersection. And each of these values of argument have a sign equal to this particular one, which means we don't have a one-to-one -one correspondence. But let's do it this way. I reduced my um, domain to uh, a, a, an area from this to this. And in this area, function is monotonically increasing, which means it establishes exactly the one-to-one -one correspondence with this domain, reduced domain, but the range is exactly the same. So I'm not changing the range. I'm just reducing the domain. I'm not changing the formula. 
the, the rules of how to calculate the, the, the sign or anything like this. Everything is exactly as before. I just reduce the domain. And in this particular domain, I can find an inverse function. I can always find from a single y, I can always find a single x. So from a single value of a sign, for instance, I can find an angle, and that's only one angle, which means the inverse function is really a function. So this is an approach, <clears throat> and, and, and that's basically an introduction into my um, explanation about what's an inverse function for each of the trigonometric functions. So for each of those trigonometric functions, I have to determine where exactly this function is monotonic and its values cover an entire range. If I will be able to establish it in this particular reduced domain, I will be able to define an inverse function. And that would be subjects of subsequent lectures about inverse functions. That's it for today. And uh, as usual, don't forget to go to unisor.com. Uh, notes for this lecture actually includes all these um, explanations which I was trying to convey now. Uh, maybe you should read it again just to be a little bit more fluent in this, uh, in, in this material. And uh, again, my main point was that um, without some drastic change, uh, we can still change a little bit the definition of the trigonometric functions by reducing the domain where it's defined, reducing the um, uh, angles where it's defined. And for this reduced um, domain, we can define an inverse function. Original trigonometric function functions with angles defined uh, across any real number there are no inverse functions, as there is no inverse function for original y is equal to x squared, where x is any real number. Um, okay, thanks very much, and uh, good luck.